Good morning, Hanover Saints. Although by the time you see this, it may be good evening or good afternoon. And so I bring you greetings on this day from this very special place, this place that was created and designed to bring comfort, this place that was built to offer solace and support, and this place where we find our peace. Tomorrow morning, we will not gather in this place. To do so would risk spreading illness and disease. So in the midst of this difficult time of distance from one another, we hope that by coming to you from this space, that you would receive comfort and support and solace and peace. May God bless each of you and all of us that we would be receive blessings especially at this time and in this space. So let me take a moment here just to thank the ones who are making this possible. To Twyla, our Minister of Music, and to Eloise, our Clerk of Session. And there is an invisible hand here named Tom Davis. And he is truly at the helm of this and thank and bless each of you for gathering in this space on this day. Jesus said, come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find your rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So now let us be God's people as we continue our time of worship in prayer. Loving Lord God, we gather over the miles seeking rest for our weary minds and our burdened spirits. Each day we receive news that adds another layer of anxiety and fear upon our hearts. So we turn to you in this hour seeking to release our burdens. Send your spirit to overcome the distance between us and bind us together as one body. For we pray in the name of the one who makes us one. Amen. share with you these words from the Apostle Paul in the letter that he wrote to the people at Ephesus. Paul writes, I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of Christ. May God bless our understanding of this reading. Paul prays that the people in Ephesus would have the power to comprehend and what he wants them to understand is not that complicated. In fact, it's quite simple. He would have them know the breadth, the length, 
the height and the depth of God's love for all through Jesus Christ. It really is that simple. And so praise God for the Shakers, our friends who taught us to sing about the gift of simplicity. I'll spare you the song, but here are the words. Tis the gift to be simple, tis the gift to be free. Tis the gift to come down where we ought to be, and when we find ourselves in the place just right, to be in the valley of love and delight. Now Paul also prays that the people would be rooted and grounded in love. In times of uncertainty and hardship and fear, it really is that simple. My friends, be grounded in your relationship with God. Be grounded in your connections with others. Be grounded in your faith. Be grounded in hope and be grounded in God's love for you. In the face of this separation and isolation, the danger is that we lose our grounding. And if you lose your grounding, you lose control. And so I offer this very simple analogy. Home Depot loves me once again. This is an outlet, an electrical outlet from the electrical aisle at the big orange store. Cost me 70 cents, can't beat that. Here's what's happening behind the walls of your outlet. You see electricity, it runs in a loop from the source of power that would be your breaker box or your fuse panel. And the wire that connects to the box has three wires inside. One wire brings the power on this side and another takes the energy back to the source on the other side. But there's a very important third wire, the green one on the bottom, and it connects to the green terminal. That is the ground wire. You see, what ground wires do is they prevent bad things from happening, like shorts or electrical shutdown, or in worst case scenario, a fire. If an outlet is not grounded, a power surge could very likely tank your TV, blow up your boom box, and crash your computer. And it's really rather simple. If there is a surge in power, the ground wire diverts that extra energy away from the outlet and redirects it to a place where it can do no harm. So here it is, one of my stranger metaphors. Imagine for a moment that you were an outlet, that you would become a source of power for others. And like an outlet, your power, it too runs in a loop, that which we receive and that which we then send out. And so too do we need the green wire, the ground wire. Stressful, anxious, and fearful times create power surges that come at us. If we are not wired to the things that ground us, we risk damage to ourselves and to those who love us. It's really that simple, my friends. Although these times are complicated and confusing, how to get through them is not. It's really that simple. Stay grounded. Turn to the ones who truly know and love you. Do the things that nourish your body and feed your spirit. Create the time to rest and to reflect. Remember and rejoice in how much God loves you. And so let us be God's people. Let us ground ourselves in the gift of simplicity and may it lead us to that place that is just right, the valley of love and delight. Amen.
And so now, let us be God's people in prayer. We will offer these words, knowing that you are with us and you're offering your spirit. God of love, we turn to you with prayerful hearts and with confidence in your loving presence among us now and every moment of our lives. We stand before you as a people of hope, trusting in your care and protection. May we be comforted by your love in these anxious times. Generous and merciful God, fill us with compassion and concern for others, young and old, that we may look after each other in these challenging times, especially those among us who are vulnerable May your example give us the courage we need to go to the margins, wherever they may be. Heal us of our fear. Healing God, bring healing to those who are sick with the coronavirus and be with their families, their neighbors, and their caretakers. We pray especially for those who are isolated that they may know your love. Stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. God of strength, accompany all those who serve us with such love and generosity in the medical profession and in all of our healthcare facilities. We give thanks for their continued work in the service of people. We ask you to bless them strengthen them, and guide them with your abundant goodness. God of wisdom, we ask you to guide the leaders in health care and governance, that they may make the right decisions for the well-being of people. May they be rooted and grounded in goodness and love. And, O oh God of creation and God of life, we place ourselves and our world in your protection and in your love. May your peace be with us and enfold us today, tomorrow, and through every time ahead. And we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Oh, 
And so now we offer and say to you, good day, Hanover Saints. Praise God for this time that we're able to share together, to receive God's Spirit, and to engender hope in one another. And so may the God of hope, may it fill you with all joy and all peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you too might abound in hope. And so may the blessings of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you, fill you, and surround you on this day and in all of our days to come. Amen.